Are you just the ultimate woman hater or just what? Man's best friend may be a man, uh, dog, but uh, a boy's best friend is a cougar. Women are the biggest snakes there are, so you might as well get what you can and get rid of them before you get bit. I don't want 29 dimensions of compatibility. I want one dimension of underwear, and I want to pull it off. I already got a best friend. She listens, does what I say, doesn't talk back, doesn't use the restroom. She's a man's best friend. A dog. Oh, and well, she is a bitch. Yeah, she's a bitch. My whole family listens to your show, including both my parents and my older brothers. And it's, uh, it's funny because every time I'm with a girl and my mom hears about it, she goes, you don't know these women. I listen to Tom Likas. Be careful. I know how these women are. I'm like, Mom, I listen to Tom Likas too. Don't worry about it. I support the feminists. Are you a feminist? Yes, I am. Really? Yeah, they're 100% equal to men. I don't pay for nothing. Yeah. I don't want to offend them in any way. I am actually very angry with myself. Why? Because... Although I think you are perhaps the rudest and most twisted man I have ever met, I am somehow unable to keep myself from listening to your radio show. I think one way to get women to lose weight would be to require Cinnabon locations to have, like, World News Tonight on or yeah, CNN. I think so. I mean, they women would start losing weight in no time. I mean, that's what they need. Put, put like, presidential facts in every cup of haagen -Dazs. The more attractive a woman is, the less likely it is that she knows who's running for president. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've never done uh, the kind of research you have, Tom, on this. I, I, I've been doing in-the-field research. Yeah. Huh? I'm, an, I'm an amateur anthropologist. You have been, like my father, uh, you're an inspiration and encouragement to invest my money, save my money. And, you know, work for my future, and I, I appreciate what you say every day, man. I was just like that one guy that was waiting around for that one girl forever, and then it occurred to me, why? You know, there's tons and tons of girls out there. If one doesn't give it up to you, many more will. You know, you just got to find them and make it happen. Right. Why waste your time on one girl? I think you should be syndicated. Women around the country need to hear what you're saying so they can open their eyes and understand how guys really feel. That's what I've been telling people at the network. I've been telling people we should be syndicated, and I would imagine my surprise when they told me I am syndicated. You are. That's what they told me. Why should anybody care if they're offended? Because, like, why should anyone be care if they're offended? Yeah, I, 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 you can't answer that question because you just keep wandering around and, uh, you know, repeating the question. You can't answer that question. I can't answer that question. Answer it now. Okay, you know, maybe I can answer that question. Thank you. You can't curse on a radio station. Okay. You can't I won't do curse. it, you filthy piece of trailer trash crap. You can't do it. Well, you resort women to trailer trash. I don't care what reason. Hey, by the way, I didn't move you to the trailer park, sweetheart. You moved yourself there. Of course. You and your husband, Always Baba, he us. moved you right in. From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Whoa, okay. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about it's a different kind of a radio talk program we're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon no i am your host right down our telephone number you're gonna need it it's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Friday on the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about. We didn't talk much about the presidential campaign because... 
Yeah, I'm still not convinced of this overwhelming demand to talk about it, but this is where we find out. We actually had a debate in Hollywood yesterday between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, for which they blocked off, uh, you know, dozens of streets. Because anything, uh, anytime anything happens at the Kodak Theater, they block off dozens of streets. And Hollywood is... Uh, You know, it's not just a name of the entertainment industry. It is turning into a traffic nightmare. And, uh, you know, this debate is essentially a TV show. Why it had to be held in the middle of Hollywood, I don't know. But it was. They should have done it in a TV studio and been done with it. But uh, if that's what you want to talk about, we can get into that. Or anything else at all. Many times I might open telephones, we find out about the things you disagree with or that you're angry about. We, we take those calls. When you think I went too far, we take those calls. Some of you who think I'm in the back pocket of some special interest group or that I'm too rich for my own good or I've got a big mouth. We, we talk to all of those people. Anything goes here, anything at all, as long as you're absolutely fascinating. And if you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Our bouncer, Dino. Dean now been serving the public for eight years as the screener of the Tom Lyka show and associate producer. And uh, he hangs up on lots of people. Over 90% of the people who call in get hung up on, which I love. I just love it. So leave it to the professionals, okay? If you can't be entertaining, if you're not interesting, just stay away from the phone. Put the phone down. Go grab a cold one. I'm sure you've stocked up. Can I say the Super Bowl? Have you noticed that now? The the NFL is apparently chasing down, you know, like your local gas station or your local bar. Anybody who mentions the Super Bowl by name in an ad, they're getting chased down. So, you know, like uh, if a bar in some small town has the Super Bowl on a big screen, they can't say that. They have to say, come on down this Sunday and watch the big game. And I think I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I heard the NFL is trying to copyright the phrase the big game. So you can't even say that. Now, how do you copyright the phrase the big game? Lots of games are the big game. Just so happens that this Sunday's big game is the Super Bowl, but there were other big games. Game 7 of the World Series would be a big game. Depending on uh, which uh, college bowl event, uh, round about the 1st of January could be a big game. If the Lakers actually make it into the first round of the playoffs and have a chance of winning it, that will be the big game. <laughs> it just depends on what you consider to be the big game. But, uh, yeah, if you notice, lots of local average, you know, of course, what happens is the NFL charges these companies all this money to be, you know, the official snack food of the Super Bowl or the official... Uh, uh, the official erectile dysfunction drug of the Super Bowl or whatever. And so now what they're doing is, uh, you know, when uh, Sid's Bar and Grill in Smyrna, Tennessee, is having a two-for-one drink uh, offer at, in front of his uh, big-screen TV with the green tint and everything. You ever go to a sports bar where all they've got is that, that old big-screen TV, the tint control is off, and the whole picture looks green? So when that guy advertises two-for-one drink specials, you know, the NFL is coming down on him like a ton of bricks, I understand. So now, uh, you know, like your local uh, your local big-screen TV dealer has to say, get an HD TV, get a plasma screen before Sunday's big game. They can't say the Super Bowl. Have you noticed that? Come on. When I was a kid, they used to do that for the World Series. Come in and buy a color TV in time for the World Series. 
And by the way, they did that with the Super Bowl for years. Well, the NFL wants to vacuum up every penny of revenue by chasing the little guy, and it's kind of lousy, I think. But what are you going to do? All you have to do to get on the air with me and talk about anything at all is 1-800-5800-TOM. You call 1-800-5800-866, and you will get on the air, and your voice will be heard for that 90 seconds or so that I'm going to give you. And you should, uh, you know, enjoy what you get. Enjoy your 15 seconds of fame. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. On occasion, I may wake up and uh, be dreaming that, hey, no one's in the house, it's empty. What would it be like just to wake up, go work out, play some tennis, play a little bit of piano, go for a bike ride, and then go out and hang out? You want to know? <laughs> Stop by my home tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. I want 800 800 tom That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Anything goes here. Anything at all. Nick on the Tom Liger Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Nick. Hi. So um, I uh, Hi. I was watching this movie called Zeitgeist, right? A friend at work had shown it to me, and it had a uh, a part of the movie. It's just kind of something that's just been passed around. You know, it's nothing big. I don't know. If, have you ever heard of it, Tom? I've heard the name. Well, I guess Zeitgeist means uh, spirit of the age. And one of the things they talk about in the movie is... Well, they, they say that you don't have to pay income taxes, and I just want to know what your thoughts were on that, if you've heard that before. and you know. Yes, I've heard it, mostly from people who are heading to prison. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I know, it, it sounds crazy because you think that there would be a law out there, you know, even if it wasn't unlawful, or even if it was unlawful, that they would, you know, eventually, you know, make some new, you know, type of, uh, I don't know, whatever, to, uh, you know, make income taxes mandatory. So, but, uh, yeah, and I guess Aaron Russo, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's a filmmaker. Yes. He put out a film. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but that was the whole topic of the film. And it sounds kind of far-fetched because, you know, how can you, I mean, if, if I don't know, like I said, you know, if, uh, if we didn't have to pay income taxes, eventually they would make a law or something requiring us to. Because, I mean, if everyone's doing it, you know, I mean. So, I don't know, I just wanted to ask you about that. No, but, there have been um, a number of tax protesters who have claimed that uh, income taxes are unconstitutional or that the income tax was supposed to be temporary back in 1912 or something like that. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is uh, I say anyone who thinks it's illegal, go ahead, don't pay your taxes, and we'll see you at Leavenworth. That, yeah, that's what I was saying because uh, my friend at work, he was saying that to me, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you give it a shot, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I say, uh, you know, have the courage of your convictions. If you really believe that the income tax is unconstitutional, I say don't file a return. Don't pay your taxes. All right. Well, I just want to get your thoughts on that. Good uh, luck. Take out old school. I'll take you out old school. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Carlos on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, um, you know, I just got to talk to you. You know, I saw that debate yesterday. I know you don't like talking about politics, but, you know, I came to the realization, you know, that, that we got we to gotta vote for Barack, man, because if we, if we let this, 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 this female into the, into the White House, you know how bad it's going to be? Well, uh, while you've got the choice, are you a registered Democrat? Well, I am a registered Democrat. So are you voting next week? Oh, yeah, I'm voting next week. All right. Uh, I'm not registered with a political party, so I can't vote for uh, Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama. Okay. Well, and, I just, you know, I was, I was thinking, because if she wins, you know, beats out Barack, I mean, dude, I mean, if she gets in, into power, I mean, we'll probably be going to war all the time. I mean, you know how women are, and, and we, we can't have that, you know? Well, I put it this way, though. I have personal experience with John McCain. Okay. And, and I think the guy's a nut. 
And uh, if if it's Hillary Clinton against John McCain, I will hold my nose and I will have to vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, I will have to. Yeah, but we have the chance right now to to not even from the, you know for her not to even be on there, and we could you know the house. Uh, well, I, I, now, I, you, you know what? If I were a Democrat, I would be voting for Barack Obama myself. Well, you know, I was just saying, you know, because, you know, you're nationwide and you, we could get all of our brothers together and not vote for her, whoever is, uh, is registered Democrat, you know, to, to not even. Uh, I definitely I, I am with you. I definitely favor Barack Obama over Hillary Clinton. So, I mean, that was just my realization all of a sudden a little bit was like, what if she actually does win? And she goes on and be and gets to the White House. You well, know how bad it's going to be. I I got news for you, Carlos. I got bad news for you. That looks like what's going to happen. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, take her to go and and tell uh, you know our, our brothers and stuff, you know, who are registered Democrats to to spread the word and you know and not let her you know even get there because. Well, you got to go out and do a little campaigning between now and Tuesday, Carlos. Okay, thanks a lot. Can you take me out of the house? Of course, I can. Yep, the primary's coming up next Tuesday. They were in California and a number of other states. So uh, if you are a uh, a real man and a Hillary hater, then you've got to go to the polls. And uh, let's face it, the only other Democratic candidate who has a chance to get the nomination is Barack Obama. And... Um, when the question comes down to what does American hate more, women or black people, I think they're going to say black people. I'm just saying it straight. I know what a racist country this is. And Barack Obama, who won in South Carolina, did not win with white votes. And if you can't win with white votes, you can't win. Can't do it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. And again, I'm saying I'm a Barack Obama supporter. I I can't vote for him, but I support him, and I would like to see him get the nomination, and I would like to vote for him over John McCain. But uh, I don't think that's what's going to happen. Let's say hello here to Robert on the Tom Likas show. Father, son, man, you've done wonders for me. Really? <laughs> yeah. You are an amazing man. You're doing God's work. Um, you just you just tell out what every guy thinks, and you just do it the real way, and we all appreciate it. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. Well, I'm calling about that lady that wrote that article. What a total moron. Kay Heimowitz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think she was just bitter because no guy wants to date her daughters, and she's just sick of supporting him. And she had to get her pain out some way, you know. And it had to be an article about guys who like playing Xbox. And we're sorry that uh, electronics are more entertaining than women nowadays. And just the way it is. Yeah, listening to women nag and complain oh, and critique us all the time. It never stops. It never stops. But uh, thank God you're out there. You're changing a lot of us. That's my gig, Robert. You are amazing. Uh, can you take me out Michael Vick style? Michael Vick style. Yeah, I can. Don't that too much. I can indeed. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here comes Todd on wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Father, Son. I must tell you that the way the NFL. You were talking about the NFL and old bar. You know the old sports bars and the old TVs and things like that earlier. This is how I feel. Think about how we feel here in Las Vegas. The way the NFL treats treats all of us like a bunch of lepers. Now, what is the deal um, in Vegas with the Super Bowl? What, what do you mean they treat you like lepers? Well, I, basically, it started off, I think it was about three or four years ago, when Tagliabue was telling um, the TV stations that were hosting the Super Bowl that you cannot air any ad spots with uh, regard to Las Vegas. No Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce. Oh, ads, I see. And, and, of course, no casinos. And no casinos, nothing. Nothing having to do with Vegas because they felt like Vegas was going to taint the NFL. 
Never mind the fact that you have Michael Vick, Pac-Man Jones, everybody else that, that's tainting the NFL with all the bad things. Well, you know, when they taint the NFL, Michael Vick was removed. Pac-Man Jones was removed for a year. A year. And Pac-Man should have, and basically Pac-Man was involved in that whole thing that happened here at that strip club in Vegas. Right. He, he should have basically been removed from the NFL permanently. Permanently. Well, I, yeah, here's the thing that, uh, that that I think about all of this, and that is, you know, the NFL doesn't seem to be very uh, appreciative of what Vegas has done for it. I mean, let's face it. How many millions of people wouldn't give a rat's ass about Sunday's game? The Super Bowl, and I'm going to say the name of it, the Super Bowl. How many people would, would not be even watching if they didn't have a way to place a bet on that game? And that's exactly it, because the bottom line is is that the NFL is all upset about the fact that they can't receive any revenue from all the bets. So instead of, you know, supporting Vegas and the fact that, yes, it's, it's creating interest and, and people are getting interested in the NFL by going to Vegas and placing bets, even the crazy bets about the coin toss and who's going to make the first interception, who's going to make the first touchdown, you know, which player is going to catch the ball first. I mean, th all those crazy bets are available here in Vegas, and so it generates interest in the Super Bowl. Which, you know, a few years ago, the NFL was kind of waning in its, in its interest. Now it's becoming bigger and bigger. Of course, it always, uh, you know, swirls around the controversy. Yeah, well, that's true. And, uh, you know, I, I, by the way, the NBA does not have the same attitude about Vegas. The All-Star Game was held in Vegas last year. Uh, and, then, of course, we had the problem with Pac-Man Jones and his entourage. Well, that's a whole other story. But also, uh, casino advertising appears in NBA games. Uh, I think Phil Jackson commented the other day when he appeared at an after-the-game press conference, and behind him, uh, in between the logos of the NBA, were the logos of an Indian casino. Right, but that's, I mean, that's Indian casinos. That doesn't quite count for Vegas. No, but no, no, but it's I gambling. I I'm talking about gambling. The connection between gambling... And that's really what the NFL is is concerned about, is that it would appear to have some connection to gambling. Because it's not just Vegas ads. You can't run Indian casino ads in the Super Bowl either. Right. I think I think you're right, though. It's just it's a whole matter of um, it's a bunch of you know stuck up conservatives that just they don't want to you know expand their horizons. I mean, look how it goes from you know a conservative. I can't even say the word, uh, like Tagliabu, to a guy like, you know, you know, like Goodall. You know, that guy, you know, it was basically handed to him. It was, it was basically like uh, one uh, super conservative uh, Republican president to the next one. You know, it's like basically handing it down to him. I mean, he basically slid into his position and, because he has very conservative views. And, uh, you know, we need, we, need, we need a little bit more liberalism in uh, the NFL. Well, I don't know if it's liberalism that you need. I mean, what the NFL needs is a good business person as the commissioner. And so the question is, is it good business for the NFL uh, to not have any connections or not to appear to have any connections to gambling? I don't, I don't think the NFL uh, – I think it really hurts the NFL by not having connections because everyone knows that gambling and sports basically go together like, you know, like, you know, anything. Like beer, beer and the and the sports, you know, it basically they go hand in hand. So I think you know, the, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, um, they all just need to come to grips with the fact that yes, there's going to be gambling, you know, with regard to sports. So just basically accept the fact, let the you know the advertisements for Vegas play, you know, let the the casino ads play, and you know Indian casinos, whatever, because it's going to generate you know revenue. Well, I, I don't. Do, here's what here's what I think. Okay, I don't think it accomplishes what the NFL wants to accomplish. It's that same thing we have in this country that we have to be protected from ourselves. There are people. People who are afraid that if you had gambling ads on NFL games, that people might go gamble on those games. Like, they're not doing it already. Uh, it's just like when people try to keep Walmart from coming to town. Why? Well, it would be bad for our community. Why? Because everybody would shop there. Exactly. Why do we need to be protected from ourselves? Look, as a libertarian, let me tell you, uh, to me, everything goes. The uh, Super Bowl should have cigarette commercials. Uh, it should have KY Jelly commercials. It should have uh, Indian Casino commercials. Anybody who wants to pay the outrageously stiff fees. Absolutely. Should be in there. Absolutely. I agree with you 100% there, Father. That's how I feel about it. Can you take me out really old school? Really old school? Of course I can. <laughs>
Arlene on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Wonderful. So listen, I'll make it quick and easy. I think if Obama or Hillary make it, they're going to get killed, either one. America just isn't ready for a black person or a female as a president. That's simple. I Okay, you're, and that's your opinion, and we, we won't know who's right until Election Day. I happen to think uh, that a Republican is not going to win no matter what. Absolutely. So it's all going to boil down to who is America less uncomfortable with, a black person or a woman? I tell you what, personally, I don't think either one of them is good. Tell us why. I think they're both a joke. Come on, give me a break. The black guy is going to support all his black people, and they're all going to have all these benefits, and the rest of the people are going to be screwed. I think that John Edwards seemed like much more of that kind of candidate than Barack Obama. You think so? I think so. I was kind of liking him. John Edwards? Well, yeah, you don't win an election in this country by having the poverty express or whatever he was doing. You know what? The average person does not care, and the average person believes the people in poverty are there because of their own stupid decisions. Well, that's somewhat true, though. Well, and so uh, it should be the focus of your campaign. Uh, if you want to become president, you have to talk about people who have a stake in what's going on. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Those are the people yeah. most likely to vote. Yep. I have a lot of friends that are not going to vote, and I keep on telling them why. They just don't have a reason. Or It's ridiculous. You, they have to voice your opinion, and this is the only way we're able to. And a lot of people... Or by calling the Tom Likas show. Yeah. So, anyway, Tom, um, it was a pleasure talking to you. I'm sure it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. I was full of yourself, but I like it. Good times. Thank you so much. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Were you a virgin? No, man. I, I've, I've been with hundreds a lot of women in my day. Hundreds and hundreds. Mother's best friend, grandmother's best friend, girlfriend's mothers. He's been with every woman on earth. Everybody. Look at the white faces. Everybody with a female name, he's been with them. I wow. wouldn't say every woman, but I mean, any woman that will let me, that's my problem. Any woman that's that a much smaller me, list. I think that's the biggest case of virginitis I've ever heard of. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. Wide open telephones on this Friday, 1-800-5800-TOM. Doug on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, hi, Tom. This is Doug. I know. I just said that. Oh, okay. Um, I'm a first-time caller. I love your show. I listen to you just about every day after work. Um, I totally agree with pretty much everything you said about Barack Obama. I know you're changing the topics. I wanted to say something about... Um, the thing with, you know, with the Michael Vick, you know, like you blow you up and then you did the Michael Vick thing. I think that was wrong. Why? Okay, because I'm a dog lover. I have a chocolate lab as a pet. And I just think that, you know, I'm really a big dog person. And that's just, that to me, that's wrong. Oh, I think what Michael Vick did was wrong, too. Oh, totally, totally. So we make fun of him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, I, I, cause, yeah, exactly. Making fun. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because sometimes I felt like it was the dog, like, you know, how the dog got, um, you know what I mean? That's like, what I, Michael Vick yeah. did to dogs. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right. What he did was the, I mean, the worst thing. They should have just thrown the book at him even more than they did. Throwing a bone at him or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I see what you're saying. I, I just hope that you, you like dogs as well. I think dogs are really important. I do. Definitely. How does your Definitely. wife feel about dogs? What's that? How does your wife feel about dogs? How does my wife? Feel about dogs. Oh, I don't have a wife. I don't think so. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dave. How is it to be a Laker fan right now? Well, here's what I want to know, Dave. Uh, it was bad enough that somebody palmed Kwame Brown off on the Lakers. How did they find someone else to take him? That's what I can't believe. I mean, Mitch Kupchak and Jerry West. Get our friend off. Mitch Kupchak on the phone. Gary, we should try to get Mitch on the phone. 
I want to find out how he got more than a bag of balls yeah. for, for Kwame Brown. It's unbelievable. I mean, Kwame's got less than a year left on his contract. Gasol's got three years left, 27 years old. The West is wet in their pants right now because the Lakers are a team to be reckoned with. And Pau Gasol gets out of that god-awful team in Memphis where oh, yeah. you know, he was the only decent player they had as far as I could say. Yeah, you, when we get Bynum back, you move him over to the left. I mean, we got three guys who are 6'10", 7, and two seven footers. Uh, there's I mean, no doubt about it. And Gasol is what twenty seven or uh, twenty six, twenty seven years old, I guess. Yep. And uh, of course, Kobe still is not that old. And uh, uh, Quam, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Andrew Bynum is uh, what twenty or twenty one? Yeah. I mean, dude, <laughs> they could be good for a few years. Now, keep in mind that uh, the the Lakers gave up two first round draft picks, uh, along with the rights to Paul Gasol's brother. Yeah. Uh, in order to uh, get Paul Gasol, but. Uh, you know, you got to give something up to get something. And uh, I think that's a good example of it. I think what Mitch Kupchak did was just brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, I mean, that is actually right now on the Internet and over the airwaves. It is headlining over the Super Bowl what just happened. I don't think uh, everybody listening even knows this. The Lakers unloaded that, that, that big piece of crap, Kwame <laughs> Brown. It's it's just unbelievable. It's a happy time to be a Laker fan. Now the fans in Memphis can see those no look passes to nobody and the other great things that he can do out there on the court. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to give a shout out to you and uh, and all of our Laker fans. Well, you know what? As much as the Lakers complain about us booing Kwame Brown, yep, I think they deserve credit for, for the Lakers seeing this and getting a little sense of urgency about getting rid of this guy. Yeah, and you know what? Everybody who uh, thought this uh, Shaq deal was what's just so bad, I think they're looking a little different on Mitch Kupchak now. I think looking a little different on how the way things are turning and out. And Jerry Especially Boss, by the way, it, 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 by the way, it was Jerry Boss who wanted to get rid of Shaq. Yeah, that's true. And um, no, I, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, the Miami Heat are the worst team in the NBA now, right? Yep, and everybody wanted to get rid of Bynum, and you know, unfortunately, he's injured. But uh, including Kobe Bryant. Including Kobe Bryant, and uh, I'm telling you, this team is it's pretty exciting. Yeah, we'll have to have Mitch on the air. I want to get Mitch on. We'll just do a phoner with him, and uh, I want to find out. I seriously, I want to find out how he pulled this off. It's it's unreal. It's unreal. Mitch is a good guy. I've had dinner with him. He uh, he lived not far from me when I when we were kids. We lived like near each other. Wow. And we didn't even know it. That's unbelievable. Yes. Well, Tom, I don't want to take up all your time, but uh, in essence of the Lakers, can you take me out African tribal style with Kobe? <laughs> I can indeed. Here you go. one 800 tom is our telephone number. He wanted Kobe also. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Hello, Tommy. Hello, Jim. Yeah. Um, Long-time listener, but third-time caller. Thank um, you so much. Love your show. Listen all the time. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, the Dodgers-Red Sox game coming up at the Coliseum. Yes. Uh, uh, do you know about that? Do you know the Absolutely. deal? Absolutely. And I'm I'm just a regular person, so I have to go through the public sale, which goes on sale tomorrow morning. And I want to ask you... Um, because I've never been to a baseball game in the Coliseum. I do have a map of how it's it's going to be laid out. I'm just wondering, in your opinion, would you rather sit in the upper rafters between the bases or have a lower level seat out towards the foul pole? I would rather sit between the bases, uh, even though it's at the Coliseum. Keep in mind that if it's done exactly the way it was done Back in 1958 uh, till 61, uh, the left field foul pole will be less than 300 feet from home plate. Yeah, that's exactly how the layout I have. It looks like 
if you were to put a football grid pattern on there, the left field foul pole is about probably about the 10-yard line, and the right field pole is about the 50-yard line. Right. And uh, have you ever seen... They it all behind that main tunnel. By the way, on the Internet, you can find photographs. Have you ever seen what it looked like at the Coliseum when the Dodgers played there? I've seen just some black and white photos, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. This is absolutely fascinating. Um, i got to say, um, it may be the best thing the uh, ownership of the Dodgers has done since the McCourts have taken over. Um, I think I, it is absolutely amazing because my mother actually went to the 1932 Olympics, and I still have a vintage program from those Olympics. And now to have the Dodgers returning there, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Well, here's what's going to be really amazing. If they sell 99,000 tickets like the Dodgers used to at the Coliseum, and then 99,000 people descend on that neighborhood at 7 p.m. to watch a baseball game and then all try to get out after the game is over. Exactly. We're going to be parking in somebody's front yard. You know, I, <laughs> I was not in L.A. at that time, and I was too young to remember when the Dodgers came to L.A. Uh, but what I can tell you is that uh, uh, I've been to the Coliseum for other big events. And I can only imagine what it's going to be like in terms of traffic. Dodger Stadium's bad enough. This will be even worse. Uh, Dodger Stadium, I don't, I do not go to a game if I have to be the driver. Someone else drives when I go to games there. <laughs> same, big, same, pretty much with the Coliseum. I've been to enough concerts there, as well as other events. Yeah, yeah. You basically park in somebody's front yard for ten bucks and risk your life. Or you pay like the thirty-five dollars for the actual parking lot, and then spend two hours trying to get out of there. Yeah, I mean, uh, it used to be when the Raiders were in town, I'd call people to go because I used to work for the station that broadcast the Raiders when they were here. I remember that. Yeah, and um, so I would tell people I got tickets to the Raider game Sunday. They'd be like, "That's great." I'd be like, "What time can you pick me up?" <laughs> exactly. There was no way I was going down there in my own car. Are you kidding me? And sometimes, when I went there back when they used to have, like, the all-day concerts, you simply get there the night before, and then you leave early morning hours after you've recovered enough, and the crowd is gone. Yeah. Yeah, the Boston Red Sox will play the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers. It's the last weekend of March. It's, yeah, I believe, the Saturday, Saturday night. The, Saturday the 29th. 29th of March. And uh, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Dodgers coming to L.A., can you imagine that's 50 years um, they are going back where they came from. Uh, when the Dodgers first came to town, I talked about this on the air the other day, Dodger Stadium had not yet been built, and they needed a place to play. And the yeah. only stadium in town was that Wrigley Field, which is where the Angels were playing. Yeah, and then that's now what Beverly Center is. No, no, no. That's I know? No, no, no. I thought it was. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, you're on the right track. The there Hollywood was a, Stars, I think. The Hollywood Stars played at Gilmore Field which was where CBS Television City is now. Okay. And, and you know, th that's the area owned by the Gilmore family, the Gilmore Bank, the Farmer's Market. They owned uh, an oil company. If you ever go to the Farmer's Market, they got that little mock-up of a gas station, a Gilmore Gasoline. Ever seen that? I haven't seen that, but I've been to Farmer's Market before, yeah. Yeah, well, if you look, uh, there's like uh, enclosed in glass, there's like the remnants of a Gilmore gas station. Hmm. Uh, right there at one of the entrances to Farmer's Market. And Gilmore Field was where Television City is today. And the uh, ho that was the Hollywood Stars. And the Los Angeles Angels, when they played in the Pacific Coast League, they were a minor league team. They played at Wrigley Field, which was a mock-up of the real Wrigley Field. Right. It was a From smaller Friday. version. And that team, uh, the Los Angeles Angels, was owned by Philip K. Wrigley the owner of the Cubs. That was the Cubs minor league team, the Los Angeles Angels. And, by the way, Philip K. Wrigley also owned Catalina Island. Right, because they have, um, I think, one of the major hotels there is the Wrigley House. Yeah, well, Wrigley owned the whole island at one time. Anyway, it's more information than anybody ever needed. Tell you what. Our email address is my name. It's tom at blowmeuptom.com. You got that? Tom at blowmeuptom.com or hear our show streaming live. Just go to blowmeuptom.com between 3 and 8 p.m. Pacific time. The Tom Likas Show.